The BRICS bloc's expansion has sparked global interest as over 40 countries are eager to join, all eyeing collective political influence. Francine Sagarino has details. More than 40 countries have expressed interest in joining the BRICS bloc, as revealed by South Africa's envoy. The BRICS group comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa was established in 2009 to counterbalance the influence of advanced economies. With formal negotiation for expansion starting last year, the growing interest from numerous nations signifies the potential for enhanced collaboration and bolstered political influence in global affairs. Anil Suklal, South Africa's ambassador to BRICS, stated that the 22 countries have formally approached the bloc and an equal number of informal approaches have been received. Among those interested in joining are Argentina, Bangladesh, the UAE, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and some European nations. The expansion plans have gained support from China and South Africa, but Russia's alignment is expected, while Brazil and India have expressed concerns about potential power declines. Despite BRICS members constituting 42% of global population, they only hold 15% of voting power at the World Bank and IMF. The upcoming BRICS conference hosted by South Africa is set to address the expansion topic and its implications, with discussions on membership dynamics expected to be prominent on the agenda. The organization's move towards expanding could mark a significant shift in its overall political influence and partnership in the international arena. South Africa is set to host a BRICS Leaders Summit in Johannesburg and will be attended by top leaders of the bloc. Russian President Vladimir Putin, on the other hand, will reportedly attend the summit by video call, with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov attending the event in person. Reporting, this has been Francine Segarino. Iraq expelled the Swedish ambassador to the country over the recent Quran burning incident in Stockholm. Kirby Hill Trinidad has more. The Swedish embassy in Baghdad has suspended operations after protesters stormed the Swedish embassy in the Iraqi capital of Baghdad and set it on fire. The attack took place after Iraqi asylum seeker Salwan Mumika desecrated a copy of the Quran last month in Stockholm, an act that angered the Muslim world. The 37-year-old Iraqi Christian repeated the act on Thursday in front of the presence of the Swedish police. Angry protesters occupied a diplomatic post ahead of the Quran burning, waving flags and chanting slogans for hours while setting part of the building ablaze. Hours later, Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al-Sudani cut ties with Sweden and expelled the Swedish ambassador to the country. Swedish Foreign Minister Tobias Bistrom called the attacks completely unacceptable and slammed Iraqi authorities for failing in their responsibility to protect the embassy and its personnel. He warned that a ministry would summon Iraq's charge d'affaires in Stockholm. Meanwhile, the Iraqi Prime Minister threatened to persecute those responsible for the attacks. The embassy would be close to visitors until further notice, while the issuance of passports and emergency documents has also been suspended. Reporting from Sweden, this has been Kerbil Trinidad, SMNI News. The Chinese government extends assistance to farmers in Nueva Ecija, Philippines. But what kind of aid is this? Let's find out with MJ Mondihar in his report from the town of Santo Domingo. Native farmer Milencio Taguinaldo received an invitation to go to the municipal office today. So he made his way to the Santo Domingo Gymnasium despite the scorching heat. His journey was worth it as he is one of the farmers who will receive a free urea fertilizer. With a current price per bag reaching over 1,000 pesos, this aid is invaluable for him. Malaki pong tulong yung sa aming magsasaka. Lalong-lalo na sa mga mahihirap na kagaya kong walang perang magastos. For lead farmer Virgie Smith, fertilizer is a significant part of their farming process. That's why they welcomed the development and attended the distribution of free urea. Ito po sir ay napakalaking tulong para sa aming magsasaka at ito po ay uh, ginagamit namin sa aming mga pagsasaka. The urea fertilizer distributed to the farmers comes from the Chinese government, amounting to 782 million pesos in value, which was received by the Philippine government last month. In fact, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. personally received it from Chinese Ambassador Wang Xilian. Now, it can be directly utilized in the fields. 
Siyempre, napalaking, napakalaking tulong po considering na napakamahal ng cost ng fertilizers ngayon. Central Luzon received a substantial portion of the urea fertilizer from China, accounting for 43% of the total supply. The farmers in Santo Domingo is just part of the thousands who will benefit from it. In total, more than 2,000 bags of urea have been distributed in the municipality. The foods and a stronger momentum of our cooperation in agriculture, hand in hand, we are forging ahead to explore new growth areas. Siyempre po nagpapasalamat tayo uh, sa ating Department of Agriculture at lalo na po sa ating mga uh, kapartners mula sa People's Republic of China dahil napakalaking uh, tulong nito sa ating mga magsasaka. With that, the beneficiaries hope for a continued cooperation between China and the Philippines in such projects. For Ganamibal of Philippines, MJ Mondihar, SMNI News.